Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So uh, this is not just your average Ikoria pre-release kit right here. This pre-release pack is the one that I'm going to use to beat the snot out of Cards with Michael. <laughs> so my buddy Michael and I over at Cards with Michael had an idea. Um, we're going to actually open pre-release kits, build a deck out of it, and then we're going to manufacture that deck in our arena accounts and play against each other with these decks live for you guys Friday night. So, uh, I'll put the uh, time and all that in the description. I'm opening this before we really got everything ironed out, but uh, uh, I need to get the, the video created so I can post it at the right time so we can uh, have both videos go up at the same time. That way we don't see each other's decks beforehand, <laughs> so we can't, uh, you know, take advantage of that. So... Basically, I'm going to open this pre-release kit, and I'm going to build the best possible sealed deck I can out of it to hopefully beat the pants off of Michael Friday night. So, let's uh, break into it and see what we get. Hopefully, we get some good stuff, and uh, hopefully, he doesn't get good stuff. So, <laughs> Nah. I want it to be fun. Well, fun games. Although, I'm not very good at sealed decks, so he might beat me pretty bad. All right. Here's our stuff. Um, here's our die. Let's see how our luck's working tonight. All right, uh, we'll call it a 12. Eight. I quit. <laughs> Concede. All right. Um, we'll look at the shiny stuff last, I guess. I think I caught a peek at it, and I don't think it's that good, but hopefully I'm wrong. So, six packs to build the deck to beat cards with Michael. What do you think? Think uh, King Kong here is going to give us the power to do it? Let's find out. So uh, this is probably going to be a little bit slower video because of the fact I'm going to have to build a deck and I'm very indecisive. But I'm going to color coordinate everything first. So we already got a cycling card, the old uh, prickly marmoset. Uh, we got our spontaneous flight in case we have any problems with flyers. Uh, it's green, yeah, green, red, then white. Okay. Uh, we got another cycling card. This one's actually really good. I, I used this on a cycling deck that I built in draft the other night, and it works really, really good. It's only a two drop. Turns your little 1-1 one, one on the second turn into a 4-4, uh, four, four, or you can cycle it for one. So, good cycling card. So, so far we've got two good cycling cards and a flying card. The Forbidden Friendship is a good little, uh, good little uh, ramp up some, some little blockers there or attackers. Ram through, good card. Um, really good uh, creature removal that also deals damage to the opponent. Uh, Blitz Leech, uh, he's okay. He's a little pricey though. Uh, Firefinder for an artifact here. Spring Claw Trap. So Firefinder works okay for ramp, but he's a little bit expensive to get out there. You usually want to get ramp going on the first couple turns. Uh, Excavation Mole. We got a boot nipper. He's he's handy in sealed deck because uh, the death touch on him. So or you can put life link if you're getting low on life. Um, the heat bonder. I do like the heat bonder. Gives us vigilance and uh, you gain life every turn. Uh, IV elemental. Good little X spell guy. Oh the Capridor. <laughs> White's looking pretty good already. So uh, yeah, th this guy is a beast. Um, this guy's fun. He might end up in the deck. Oh, Mythos of Brokos is our first rare. Terrible. Just terrible. And then we got the, uh, we did get the Dismal Backwater, so we got the, the blue-black land here. But yeah, our first rare was a swing and a miss. Um, yeah, return up to two permanents from your graveyard to your hand. Just not, not anything good. All right, let's check second pack. Hopefully second pack will get a little better rare. Ah, Tentative Connection. That one can be fun. Uh, especially if we've got some Menace creatures, because that is only one red to steal somebody's creature. Um, Perimeter Sergeant. Eh, it's alright. Nothing crazy. Thieving Otter can be fun and sealed, if you can find a way to make them unblockable. If we get the other blue creature that, uh, when he attacks, one of your other creatures is unblockable. That could be useful. Uh, Honey Mammoth uh, is a little pricey. He's a big beast, though. And you gain four life. Cavern Whisper. Um, it's pretty weak. Uh, it's got Menace, but it's really expensive. It's four for a four four when, with the Mutate, or five to hard cast it. It has Menace, but when it mutates, all it does is make an opponent discard a card. It's really not 
and they get to choose which cards. It's really not that effective. Uh, facet reader, I don't know. He's not that good because there's so many cycling cards in this deck. I'd rather do cycling to do the discard and draw. But anyway, Night Squad Commando, uh, he does create a uh, blocker, little little 1-1 one, one blocker, but not too great. Flycatcher Gurufid, Gurufid, okay, Gurufid. Uh, choice of Vigilance or Reach, he can be pretty handy, especially late game. Ooh, Light of Hope, Light of Hope's a great card. So, so far the best cards I'm getting are all white, so <laughs> I don't know, I might end up having to go white. Rumbling Rock Slide deals damage to target creature equal to the number of lands you control. That can be pretty beastly. Uh, so red and white, we're getting some decent stuff. Then we got the Howl Bonder for the Menace. So that's pretty that's pretty handy. Um, so we got one of the other Bonders, and he can be red or black. Uh, Chittering Harvester. Now this one's actually a really good mutate card, but it is pricey. It's a uh, six for a four six to hard cast or a uh, five to mutate it. But when a re mutates, opponent sacrifice each opponent sacrifices a creature, so that's good. It gets rid of a creature. Now uh, we got the Zagoth Crystal, decent little ramp if we were running the uh, black, blue, and uh, green, but probably not. Uh, Labyrinth Raptor. We got another menace. Okay. Every creature you control with menace becomes a block. Defending player sacrifices a creature blocking it. So, that's pretty cool. And we got a dinosaur token and a plane. So, that's not going to do us any good. So, we did get a labyrinth raptor for another uh, double color there uh, for the rare. So, we got a, a, a quite a bit of menace going on here in that pack, at least. <laughs> we got a bunch of menace cards. I think we had a menace card in the first deck, too, or the first pack, too. Uh, checkpoint Officer, he can be really handy and sealed because he taps down the biggest threat on the board. Um, another Thieving Otter, okay. Go for Blood, this one's pretty cool uh, because it does have the Cycling for one, which is good, but target creature you control fights target creature you don't control for two. That's pretty good, pretty handy. So we're getting some decent red and white commons. Sudden Spinnerets, we're getting some decent green stuff too. Uh, this one, target creature gets plus one, plus three until end of turn. Put a reach counter on it and untap it. So I, I love using cards like this because uh, they're a nice little shock, kind of shock and awe thing. It says you send over your creature to attack and they think you're untapped. So they'll send over their creature and then you untap it and pump it up and bow. There goes their creature. <laughs> Mutual Destruction. Uh, this one's pretty decent. Uh, you can sack a small creature to destroy a large creature for one black. Not too bad. Decent removal. Hampering Snare, uh, another cycling card. Creatures your opponents control get negative two until end of turn. Cycling for two. Uh, it has come in handy. I've hard cast and I've cycled this before in drafts or uh, sealed. Blood Curl is a great removal spell. Destroy target counter and then put a menace counter on a creature you control. Destroy target counter. Did I say destroy target counter? Destroy target creature. It's a little bit pricey at four, but you get menace on one of your creatures plus you take out their biggest threat. So, or the biggest threat to you anyway. Thwart the enemy, so prevent all damage that would be dealt this turn by creatures your opponents control. We got the Patagia Tiger. Um, I draft him a lot because he's a he's a five drop, but he's a three four flyer, and he does pump up a human when you put him out into play. So not too bad. Um, flyers, big flyers are hard to deal with and sealed or draft, so he could come in handy. He's a little bit pricey though. Heightened reflexes. Uh, this one actually can, can do some damage. Uh, it only gives your creature plus one until end of turn, but you put a first strike counter on it. So it's plus one plus first strike, so it can take out one of their creatures and no, no risk to your own for only one red mana. Not bad at all. Uh, then we got the Moloch. Uh, he's got cycling. Whenever he enters the battlefield, exile target card with a cycling ability from your graveyard until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. So he's a cycling card that uh, if you hard cast him for five for a four four, you actually get to get one of your cycled cards back, so that's pretty nice. Uh, we got the Horn Bash Mentor, which is uh, he puts a trample counter on one of your creatures, and then you can pay one green and two colorless to uh, and tap them to put a one one counter on each creature you control with trample. So, uh, but it has to be a non human, and he's a human, so it's kind of weird. It only really these mentors only pump up uh, beasts and stuff. Uh, Survive Thunder Mane, another cycling card. Uh, whenever you cycle a card, you can pay two colorless. When you do, 
Thunder Man deals two damage to target creature and you gain two life. He's a two drop three two, so not bad. And he's red and white. And we got a General Kudro of Dranath for our uh, our mythic. We finally got a mythic in here. Other humans you control get plus one plus one. Uh, whenever General Kudro of Dranath or another human enters the battlefield under your control, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. Uh, two colorless, sacrifice two humans, destroy target creature with power four or greater. So we could run kind of a, a little uh, weenie human deck uh, and try and get a mass, a bunch of humans out there. And then once he gets out there, we can destroy big creatures. But I don't know. Uh, human decks still are kind of weak, even with this set, I think. And then we did get a, a, one of the, the Scour Barons, one of the uh, Gain Life Lands for white and black. So we got white and black and blue and black for our dual lands. All right, pack number four. Let's see what we get here. Oh, Blade Banish, the first card is a good one. Great removal card on white. Uh, exile target creature with power four or greater. So that's great. Uh, for four, not bad. It could be a little bit cheaper, but it's a great removal spell. Uh, we got a keep safe, counter target spell that targets permanent you control and draw a card. Uh, another forbidden friendship. Fully grown. Uh, it's a giant growth that costs a lot, but you get a permanent trample counter on it. It's plus three, plus three until end of turn, but put a trample counter on the creature. It's for three. A dead weight. Good removal spell there for smaller creatures. Another blood curdle. So we got two blood curdles. Another thwart the enemy. Another Patagia tiger. This is all another heightened reflex. This is another sleeper dart. <laughs> Literally every card, every comment in that pack was a duplicate, I think. Uh, easy prey. Another good removal. So we're getting a lot of good black removal cards. Clash of Titans. That's a good red removal because you actually get to take out two of your opponent's creatures. <laughs> they make them. You make them fight each other. It's a little bit pricey, but I mean, it's a two shop. Uh, Auspicious Sterix. Uh oh, there we go. Um, this guy can be a beast when he's on play. He literally is a beast, but, <laughs> uh, when you mutate him, uh, exile a card from the top of your library until you exile X permanent cards, where X is the number of times this creature is mutated, put those permanent cards onto the battlefield. And he's a 6-6. Six, six. Um, I do recommend not using him for his mutate cost, because one more is better to hard cast him, because he is a 6-6, six, six, and then mutate onto him, but will we get enough mutate to make it work? All right, and then we got a Death's Oasis for our, our rare. We're really not getting good rares on this kit. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, then return a creature card with lesser converted mana cost than the creature that died from your graveyard to your hand. I, I, I lost what I was talking about halfway through that. That's too much text. All right, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put the top two cards of your library in your graveyard, then return a creature card with lesser converted mana cost than the creature that died from your graveyard to your hand. Sacrifice death of Death's Oasis, you gain life equal to the greatest converted mana cost from one creature you control. That's a terrible card. I'm not, what, what? I'm not gonna stack that, that's terrible. Oh, we got some counters. <laughs> that's an awful card. Death's Oasis, is anybody actually using that? Can, has somebody figured out a way to make that thing not suck yet? <laughs> Just wondering. Man, we're not getting the best rares in the in this pack. All right, let's keep going. Ferocious Tigerilla enters the battlefield with your choice of a trample counter or menace counter. So we got yet another menace. We might be running a menace deck here. We'll have to see. Another checkpoint officer. That's good. Uh, Frostveil Ambush. Tap up to two target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during the controller's next untap step. It's five. Two blue and three colorless. God, that's expensive. Cycling for one, though, so if we build a cycling deck, we could put it in there just for filler. Uh, Fertilid, this guy's actually pretty cool. Um, it's a little bit little bit costly for what he does because you're basically just going to... You're going to use it for ramp. Uh, basically, he enters the battlefield for three. He comes in as a 2-2 two -two with two 1-1 one -one counters on him. You pay two and remove a 1-1 one -one counter, and you search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. I mean, it's a little bit pricey for what it does. Serrated Scorpion, however, is awesome. This guy is fun. Uh, whenever he dies, deals two damage to each opponent, and you gain two life, and he's a 1-2 for one. Great card. Corpse Churn. Put the top three cards of your library into graveyard, and then, and then you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So, not too bad. Uh, especially if you're trying to fill up your graveyard for something, but probably not something we're going to use too much in a sealed deck. Flycatcher Gurafid. 
Uh, your choice of a Vigilance or Reach counter. I think we already got one of him. Yep, yeah, we already got one of him. Pacifism, uh-oh. Our white is looking really, really strong. Um, Pacifism's a great, just nullifier for the for the big problem. Uh, Blister Spit Gremlin. Uh, you pay one and tap him. He deals one damage to each opponent. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you can untap him, though. He's a one-drop, one-one. Not too bad. Uh, all right. Essence Scatter. Uh, Counter-target creature spell for two. Swallow Hole. This was in my uh, top 15 uncommon cards in Ikoria video. I think this one's a really good removal because... It's only one to cast. Um, the downside is you can only do it on a tapped creature, but it exiles them. It doesn't destroy them. So it works on indestructible and stuff. Um, uh, you tap one of your creatures and pay the one, and then you exile target tap creature, but you put a permanent 1-1 one, one counter on the creature you tap to pay the spell's cost. So you get a plus one, plus one counter on one of your creatures, and you get to remove the biggest threat, all for one white mana and one turn without your creature. So... I think that's a hell of a payoff. And then we got a Rawgrin Crystal, which is red, blue, and white. For a little more ramp. A little Bastion of Remembrance. This one's a good one. Um, enters the battlefield. It creates a 1-1 one, one white human soldier to creature token. And whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. So we are getting some good black cards. Oh, oh, oh the Fiend Artisan. There we go. Second Mythic, and it's a good one. Um, so Fiend Artisan gets plus one, plus one for each creature card in your graveyard. And you can pay X plus hybrid, either green or black. Sacrifice another creature. Search your library for a creature card with a converted mana cost X or less. Put it on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. That's pretty awesome. He's only a two drop, one, one. But I mean, he gets plus one, plus one for each creature card in your graveyard. So he's probably not going to be a one, one. Uh, unless you cast him on the second turn. Yeah, he's probably not going to be a 1-1. One, one. But uh, the ability to search your library for pretty much any creature you want. You sack a little 1-1 one, one token guy or something. Um, like like you put out the Bastion of Remembrance <laughs> on turn 3 or turn 2 if you got ramp. Create that little 1-1 one, one human soldier. And then put him out. And then you can grab pretty much any creature you can afford to pay for in your deck. Just by sacking that little guy. You can search... Uh, and it goes right on the battlefield. It doesn't go into your hand either. It goes right on the battlefield. So Fiend Artisan uh, is probably going to be what we're going to end up building this deck around. Because so far, that's our definitely our best card. Uh, we got our Green and White Blossoming Sands. So we did get another dual land. And Green and White are two of our stronger colors. And Black and White. So we might have a couple dual lands that we can actually use. Alright, let's hope Pack 6 is just a beastly pack. Because, uh... Yeah, I got the greatest stuff, but we did get the Fiend Artisan. I mean, we got some nice stuff, but I'm not seeing a really obvious uh, good combo here yet, but we'll see. Another Forbidden Friendship. That's the third one. Solid Footing. Um, it, it does have Flash. It's only a one drop. Uh, it gives target creature plus one, plus one. And if that creature has Vigilance, it assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. So... If you're doing a Vigilance deck, that's a pretty good card, but uh, we haven't really gotten a whole lot of Vigilance. I think we only got a couple of Vigilance creatures, and they weren't very big, so probably not going to help us any. Frost Links, uh, when he enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during his controller's next untap step. He's a 3-drop 2-2. Two, two. Just kind of slows the opponent down a little bit. Ooh, the almighty Brushwag. Green is looking tasty. Um, so he's a 1-drop one 1-1 one, one with Trample. But for four, you get plus three, plus three until end of turn. And that's uh, as many times as you've got the mana for. So and green's got a lot of ramp, although we didn't get a lot of ramp yet. Um, okay, we got a durable coil bug. It's a two drop, two, two. Um, but he does have a built in. Uh, you can pay five later game to return to your hand from the graveyard. So he's not too bad. He's a creature that you can get back later on. Um, Bloom Pangolin. Three drop, one five, completely worthless. Uh, Dreamtail Heron, another mutate card. Whenever he mutates, you draw a card, but he is a little bit pricey. He's five to cast for a flying three four, and he's four to mutate for a flying three four that draws a card. The mutate's not terrible, but still a little bit, a little bit costly. An adaptive shimmerer. Uh, we didn't get an Ozlis, so this guy's probably just too expensive. He's a flash, but he's a five drop for a three three, and it's just three one one counters. 
Uh, we don't have anything to, to multiply counters. We don't have anything like the Ozlith to keep the counter. So probably not going to stack him. Ooh, a Vulpaki. I love the Vulpaki. Uh, for the Mutate creatures, this is one of my favorites. Uh, this was in my top 15 commons video. Uh, we can hard cast them for four for a 2-3 flyer. But whenever he mutates, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. And he mutates for three. So you can mutate them pretty quick, pretty early in the game. And get, make a 2-3 fly, or uh, actually a 3-4 flyer the first time you mutate a mod to something. So all we need is a non-human out, and we can get a pretty big flyer. Oh, another swallow hole. There we go. Another good removal. Escape protocol. Whenever you cycle a card, you may pay one. When you do, exile target artifact or creature you control, then return to the battlefield under its owner's control. If we've got anything with a really good ETB, uh, which I don't think we have a whole lot of really good... Uh, uh, entering the battlefield triggers or anything on any of the creatures here or artifacts. So probably nothing we're going to be able to use. The Zygoth Mamba. This one is one of my top 15 uh, uh, favorite uncommon cards. Um, 15 is a very loose term. Uh, so <laughs> uh, he's a one drop, one, one. Whenever he mutates, target creature and opponent controls gets negative two, negative two until end of turn. So it's removal, but on the mutate. Oh, and a Song of Creation is our other rare. Oh, man. Our rare is really kind of host us in this, uh, this pre-release kit here. You may play an additional land of each of your turns, which is good. But whenever you cast a spell, draw two cards, which is good. The beginning of your end step, discard your hand. What? No. And it's three colors that um, I don't think we're going to end up using blue. We didn't get a lot of good blue stuff here. So, <laughs> so we're probably not going to use that one either. Oh, and then we got a foil, uh, Rugged Highlands. So we got green and red of the dual land. Extra one. And then our beast token and our island. All right, so we got two of the multicolor rares that are pretty much useless. Um, yeah, I wouldn't use either one of those. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what you guys are thinking, but I am definitely thinking the Fiend Artisan would be silly not to play. Um, but the question is, what are we going to go get with it? You know, uh, is it really going to pay off to build the deck around this guy? If we don't have really big beastly creatures, we can throw into play with them. Um, now the other cool ability of this guy is if there's a creature that we want to put out that we don't even have the colors for, you don't even have to have the colors for it. Cause you just put it right on the battlefield. You don't have to pay its mana cost. You just pay it with the X there. So if we if we de if we decided to go like like red and green, but we wanted to cast the Kudro, we wanted the Kudro in there, we could actually use the art artisan to go grab the Kudro in our deck and then slap him on the battlefield. Um, so there is that opportunity there, uh, but yeah, I don't think the Kudro is really that that good to to bother with it. I mean, you just exile a target card from an opponent's graveyard. We're not going to be playing against uh, any Theros cards, so <laughs> there's not quite as much graveyard manipulation in this set as there was in Theros, but I don't know. Um, I'm thinking blue was really, really weak, and uh, you can't really see because there, there's so many cards that are off the screen, but we actually got about probably five less blue cards than we did of any other color. There's not really that many blue cards in, in the blue. So we just we didn't get a lot of blue in there, and I didn't really see a whole lot of anything. I mean, if we'd gotten a couple of the ominous seas, we would have gone blue for sure. Um, now, the question we got to ask ourselves is there is a couple, like the Startling Development and the Hampering Snare. There is a couple decent cycling cards if we got enough to run cycling. Oh, and the Frostbill Ambush. So we did get some cycling cards that we could literally just use for the cycling triggers. Uh, but I don't think we got a lot of cycling stuff. We got the Prickly Marmoset. But, I mean, there really wasn't any good cycling cards in here. Uh, I think our best cards were really Mutate cards. Uh, we got the Vulpakeet. We got the Sterix. And we got the uh, Mamba. But we didn't get a lot of Mutate cards either. Uh, what do we get in our artifacts here real quick? Let me see. So the Crystal that's not the right colors. We got a couple Sleeper Darts. Another Crystal that's uh, not the right colors. Oh, we got one Sleeper Dart and one Spring Jaw Trap. Okay, my bad. I was thinking they were both the same card. Um, 
We did get the uh, Firefinder, which does have Vigilance. And I remember we did get a, a card that pumps up the Vigilance there, the solid footing. Although it doesn't matter because this is a 1-1, one, one, so... Uh, when it enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. If we need some uh, ramp, might work. I don't know, but it's, it is a 3-drop or a 1-1, one, one, but it helps us go get a land. All right, so this is tough. Um, oh, what's our, what's our pre-release? Yep, that's what I thought. I thought it was the Karuga. The Karuga the Macrosage is our companion. Um, your starting deck contains only cards with converted mana cost 3 or greater and land cards. When the Macrosage enters the battlefield, draw a card for each other permanent you control. Converted mana cost 3 or greater. He's a 5-4 five, for 5. Yeah, we don't have enough cards to build a deck that's all 3 or higher. <laughs> I don't think. We'd have to run 5 colors and then we'd never actually go anywhere with it. This is really just a, a one that you got to build a silly combo around to make it work. Uh, so we can put them in there as a hard cast. Uh, it's either blue or green, but 5 for a 5-4 five, that does nothing. Um, well, actually, he's still his, his ETB still works. We still get to draw a card for each uh, other permanent you control with converted mana cost 3 or greater. He might be worth stacking. I don't think so, though. Let me see what we got here. All right, so we did get, so we got the Thunderman, which is a decent cycling card, but I, I've had trouble trying to use this in Sealed because that you got to pay the two to make it happen. And usually Sealed, you're using all your available mana to try and cast stuff. Now, we did get a lot of Menace cards, I noticed. So we might be able to build something around Menace and Mutate, I'm thinking, maybe. Let's see what we got here. So, we got those two. And we got two of the uh, blood curdles, right? Yeah, two of the blood curdles in black, which give us menace as well. So, we do have quite a bit of menace ability here. So, we got, we got two good creatures with menace. We got the Howl Bonder and the, uh, the Labyrinth Raptor. Um... So your opponent has to sacrifice one of the creatures that blocks it with Menace. And the Howl Bonder makes all your Menace can't be blocked except by three or more creatures. So, so we got some really good Menace cards here. We might want to consider going some kind of Menace. I think we had some other good Menace stuff too. Let me take a look here real quick. Um, yeah, this is worthless. We're not going to stack him. Um, need to get the Corpse Churn. We do got the easy prey. We got a lot of good black removal here. So I'm kind of thinking. Kind of thinking black would be a good way to go because all the removal. Um, hmm. We got the boot nipper, which is good. Um, we got a lot of good black removal, and we got the menace stuff in black. Let's get the blue out of here, because blue, blue just really didn't have much of anything worth running. The thieving otters, but we didn't get a way to make them unblockable. So, so we got our, we got some menace stuff going here. I don't think we had anything else with menace, did we? I thought we did have another black card with, that had some kind of menace ability, but I think, well. I guess not. It must have been must have been one of the other colors. It must have been red. Red has a lot of menace. Let's see. We got the blitter shot or blister bl blister spit <laughs> gremlin. Okay, so the the tigerilla can come in with menace on it. Um, we got the clash of titans. We got the heightened reflexes, which heightened reflexes with menace could be a nasty little combo because. Menace and then first strike. That's not very much fun for our opponent. <laughs> so even if they block with enough creatures to kill our menace creature, we give it first strike plus and plus one, and it kills them all, and we don't die. So <laughs> there's always that. Uh, so Moloch, uh, so another heightened reflexes. So we got two of the heightened reflexes. We got the Gopher Blood, so another decent removal card. We got some good removals in red here with the Clash of Titans and Go for Blood and the Rumbling Rock Slide. And then we got the 
The tentative connection. I thought we got two of those, didn't we? Nope, I guess just one of those. So we got the tentative connection so we can steal one of their creatures, which is basically like a removal spell because you steal it and then attack them with it. Um, and they probably block and kill it. <laughs> uh, the Marmoset is first strike. So we did get a couple decent creatures in red here. And one of them does have the ability for Menace, and then the Heightened Reflexes with the Menace could be pretty nasty. So let's kind of put those together over there. And we do got some early kind of, you know, kind of getting a couple 1-1s one out of here, because each one of these Forbidden Friendships creates two 1-1 two one -one creatures. One of them has haste. Uh, the, blister, the Blister Spit can kind of come in handy. Um, the Moloch, if we got some cards with cycling in the graveyard, we'll have to see how many cycling cards we get in there. But we didn't get a lot of cycling stuff, so I'm not really sure. Let's kind of put this stuff off to the side here. Um, our green, we had some really good green stuff. We had our, uh, we got our Brushwag. He is a blast. Um, so we also got our Flycatcher, uh, Girafids, which are a little bit pricey, but they can come into play with Vigilance on them and with Reach. And, you know, flying is a big problem. The Fertilid, I'm not sure about. Oh, and we got the Starix. The Starix is a beast. Literally. See? Beast. Um, <laughs> the Starix, his ability is so much fun. Where are we focusing? Okay. His ability is a lot of fun. So let me put that in the, the definitely good pile. We got the Thwart the Enemies, which could save us for a round. Fully grown. We got the Hornbash Mentor, so we got Trample. Another Thwart the Enemy. The Spinnerets is really good. Another one of those Girafids. Uh, the Honey Mammoth is good late game beast. Uh, the Mythos of Brokos. So again, we swing and a miss on a rare. The Eye of Elemental could be a really good uh, early game blocker or late game beast. Um, Excavation Mole. Uh, does put stuff into our graveyard, which could help some of the black stuff. Uh, and it does have trample for three, three, for three. We got the ram through, which is great. Oh, another fertilage. We got two of those fertilage. So, let me see. Thought. Wait, didn't I? Didn't I already go past one of those? Oh, I guess that's the only one. I must have put it on the bottom. Not realize it. Okay. So, we did get the uh, alert heat bonder, which works for either white or uh, green as well with Vigilance, and it gives us a life every turn, and three for a two, four. Good little blocker. Um, blocks a lot of stuff coming over, and it gives you life every turn that he's on the, on the field, so so he's a pretty good card. Whether we go green or white, we might want to consider putting him in there. Um, all right, so last color to look at is our white. It's kind of going to be hard to narrow it down here. Uh, I'm terrible at making decisions anyways. So we got the solid footing, which works with Vigilance, but we don't have a lot of Vigilance stuff. We do have two of the Swallow Holes, which is good. We got the Pacifism, which is great. The Vulpiki, which is great. We got two of these Checkpoint Officers. We do have the Big Flyer with the Patagia Tiger. We got the Blade Banish, which is great removal. Oh, we got two of the Patagia Tigers. Uh, two of the Checkpoint Officers. We got the Light of Hope. This card has, has <laughs> helped me win many games, especially in Sealed. That card is awesome. Um... Perimeter Sergeant, not very good. The Capridor, oh yeah. Yeah, we got the Capridor. And then we got the Spontaneous Flight. That's a really good card for, uh, you know, you you can slap 2-2 two, two and flying on a creature uh, at instant speed in the middle of combat. So you're pretty much going to take out one of your opponent's creatures with it and give one of your creatures permanent flying. So, yeah, white is, white is stacked. Um... The white doesn't follow very well into our menace, and we wouldn't be able to probably use our green unless we wanted to go four colors. Um, but white has just got a lot of just really good, strong stuff in it. A lot of good removal. The Capridor is a beast. The Vulpiki is great for, for Mutate. Um, the Checkpoint Officers take care of problems. The Patagia Tigers, like, like white is... Nothing like super, super over the top impressive, but everything in here, there's just really good stack of white. Um, white is looking really good, really tempting here. Um, God, I'm thinking maybe... Oh, I'd hate to get rid of green because the Starix 
and the ram through and the brush wag are all really good but the starks is a little bit pricey i'm thinking maybe we want to go white red and black uh mainly try and concentrate because we get really got really good uh combos with the menace stuff here um we do have our fiend artisan that can go in uh and the black by itself doesn't doesn't need the green for the fiend artisan so we can we can use that as a black card so we go white black and green or white red and green white red and black yeah i'll figure this out eventually white red and black we probably can make a pretty decent deck out of it here um I think that's probably what I'm gonna try. I think we're gonna try to go white, red, and black. Because uh, the white, white's just got answers for everything. And it's got some really good, powerful cards with the Vulpiki and the Caprador. And those checkpoint officers could really help. And the Potato Tiger is gonna be hard to deal with. It's gonna be hard to deal with big flyers like that. They're pricey, but you know, late game, if that guy gets out there, he's gonna, he's gonna have trouble dealing with him probably. Especially with all the removal, we got to take out all his threats. <laughs> uh, and there is the fact that we've got the Artisan, so we can get the Caprador or the Potato Tigers out pretty quick. The question is, do we have any way of pumping up the Caprador? That's the problem. Uh, we have... So we've got the go for Blood, but that's Combat Damage. So that's not going to work. Uh, because the Caprador combat damage... See, it's only non-combat damage. If you're not familiar with this card, uh, Caprador is... He was one of my top picks and my uh, top 15 uncommon cards. Uh, he's a 3-drop, 1-3 flyer. But if non-combat damage would be dealt to Stormwild Caprador, prevent that damage and put a 1-1 one -one counter on him for each 1 damage prevented this way. So if somebody shocks him, he instantly becomes a 3-5. Uh, so, you know, if somebody hits him for four damage, it becomes a, a five, seven. I mean, the guy just gets bigger every time somebody tries to, tries to do damage to him. Uh, so, yeah, I'm thinking, the problem is we don't have any way of doing damage to him on our own. And so we'd have to rely on Michael to, to, to try and, try and take him out. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, now that's each opponent. Ah, I was thinking the gremlin might do it, but nope, that's each opponent. So, the only thing we've got is the rumbling rock slide. Deals damage to target creature each equal to the number of lands you control. So, I mean, we could hit him with that. Uh, but, aside from that, that's really our only real direct damage, I think. Um, yeah, we don't have a lot of direct damage in here at all. One thing that's like deals deal one point of damage to target creature or anything like that. Uh, everything's damage to the opponent. Yeah, destroy creature. Negative two, negative two, destroy. <laughs> yeah, we have no we have no direct damage for our Caprador. We've got one. The rumbling rock slide is literally our, our only direct damage that we can hit with the, the Caprador with. Uh, we don't have anything in green either, so. Yep. Yep, nothing in green either. So we've got no way of doing damage to. Oh wait, wait, we've got the uh, uh what is it, sleeper dart or not sleeper dart? The spring spring jaw trap, three damage to any target. So we could put that in there and try and hit our Caprador with that, uh, or take out something that's threatening us if we don't have the Caprador in play. So we do have two ways of pumping up the Caprador on our own. Not great ways, not a lot of ways. It's a little weak, but it is a way. So, and we can run the heat bonder even if we're not running green. So I think what we're looking at is probably so far, um, definitely looking at this. We definitely want the Nipper and the Mamba if we have enough. Well, I'll have to see how many mutates we've got. I don't know if we got enough mutate to really keep that guy. Uh, the Bastion Remembrance is good. Corpse Churn, I'm not sure about. Put that outside. The Scorpion is awesome. Easy Prey is good. Dead Weight's good. Mutual Destruction's good. 
Now we do have the Chittering Harvester. It's got Mutate on it. Um, put him off to the side. Cower and Whisper has got Mutate, but it's not really that good. Um, this guy's decent, but he's got no toughness. He's only two toughness, and he costs six to get out. He does have Flash, and he, he takes out one of your opponent's creatures uh, that's two or less toughness. But, uh, you know, that's kind of late game. I don't think we're going to be worried about two twos at that point. Um, the remove all counters from that creature could be handy if he's running counters, but I don't know. Let me see. I'm sure we already got way too many cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. So, yeah, we're way over already. So we got to trim this down quite a bit to begin with. Uh, yeah. So, probably going to hold off on a lot of that. Now, um... I don't know. Let's see how much mutate we've got real quick because I don't think we've got enough mutate to really make it effective as an ability here. Uh, the Volpa Keep, we can, we can keep in there regardless because it's good on its own even if it doesn't mutate, but we'll probably mutate it onto something. Um, got a lot of removal and a lot of answers for stuff, but yeah, not a lot of mutate. So I think our Mamba, unfortunately, is going to have to come out of there because we don't have enough mutate to support him. And the Cheering Harvester, we'll have to put him off to the side and see if we need more late game beasts or not. So let's put the uh, let's put the green off to the side, which sucks. There's some really good green guards. That Sterix would have been awesome. Um, all right, let's kind of figure out what our control and removal is here. And then our creatures, and then other stuff. So creatures, creatures. Um, other stuff, creatures, 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 removal, uh, removal and damage, removal, removal, creatures, other stuff, creatures, creatures, other stuff, removal, um, removal, removal, creatures, creatures. So... Our creatures might be looking a little weak right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, 13 creatures. Not terrible. Uh, but these two are really only... They're more enchantments than creatures because they're just to tap down the, the creatures that are causing us problems. We might want to look at him and see if we're even going to need him because he does cost mana and we've got a lot of removal. How much removal we got here? We've got... One, two, three, four, five, technically six, seven, because that takes out two, but we'll call it six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we got as much removal as we have creatures. So um, we really don't need the checkpoint officers, I don't think. I think we've got enough removal. We don't need the extra removal. Um, yeah, and, and with the menace and stuff and, and him having to sacrifice a creature if he tries to block uh any of our menace creatures while he's out that's going to be a problem for him so we're going to remove creatures that way um yeah i mean whew. i think if anything we might need some more good creatures in here but 13 and 13 is 26 we might not even be able to stack all that removal <laughs> uh plus we got these cards we got to put in here um I'm wondering if the Remembrance is worth it to put in here. The Heightened Reflexes I love with the Menace thing, so I really want to put those in there. That's basically removal too, because you're, you're probably going to take out a creature every time you throw that down. Um, the Light of Hope and the Spontaneous Flight I think are pretty important because we need more Flyers. And this card takes out an enchantment, or we gain that extra 4 life to hold us around for another turn so we can win. Or put a 1-1 counter on a creature at instant speed to... You know win a fight so this card is the the ultimate little uh swiss army knife in white right now so i really like having those cards in there but we're gonna have way too many cards one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one two 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 three two four two five two six seven twenty eight 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 i think we're gonna have to get rid of the clash of titans even though that would be awesome fun uh, i think we're gonna have to pull that one out 
The rock slide and the, the trap we definitely need because we want to try and pump up our capador with those. Go for blood's good because it's got cycling, or we can remove a creature if we've got a bigger creature. Um, blade mass, pacifism, swallow holes. These are all really, really good cards in here. But I mean, we've already got more than we can we can build because we're gonna need uh, about 16, 17 lands in here, which means we can only have like 23 to 24 cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So even with just our creatures and our, and our removal spells and without having a whole lot of creatures like I would like, um, we're already kind of over like quite a bit. Um, you might want to take out one of the Patagia Tigers because, you know, if we get him too early game, he's going to hurt us more than help us because he's going to sit in our hand when we can't cast him. So you might take out one of those. I don't really want to take out creatures, though. I don't have a lot of creatures in here. Got a lot of combat tricks, but not a lot of creatures. Um... Yeah, the, the blood curls are amazing because they're going to give us the menace as well. Easy prey is good. Dead weight's good. Mutual destruction. Yes, we can take out the mutual destruction because it is sor it is only sorcery speed, and we do have to sack a creature to destroy a creature. It's cheap. I like it. But we've got a bunch of removal in here. We've got the all these. The those two are both going to take care of this early game. These will take care of late game. Um, we got to go for blood to take out one. We can use the rock slide or the spring jaw trap on one of theirs. We got the blade banish. We got the pacifism, the swallow holes. Yeah, I think we got plenty of removal. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, one, two, 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 three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Twenty-five. We're getting closer. All right. <laughs> um, I just I don't like having so few creatures. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Literally only ten creatures. That's just not enough. Um, wow. I think we're gonna have to take out one of the one of the uh, heightened reflexes, even though that's awesome for the uh, for the menace there. Take out. See, this is why I'm terrible at sealed deck. We're almost into an hour here. <laughs> We're 47 minutes, and I still can't decide what to take out here. So, let me see. What other creatures do we got? What do we got? Early drops here. We only got one, one drop, and then one, two, three, two drops. And then two, three, three drops, two, four drops, and a five drop. So our, our curve's pretty decent on the creatures. But there's just not a lot of creatures, especially if he's running removal too. And, you know, the Vulpikeets were going to mutate probably. And, I mean, we've got this guy to go get more creatures. Uh, do we have any creatures that... We got the Cheering Harvester that does kill a creature on the opponent's hand when he when he mutates, and he's a big creature. He's six. He he would be the biggest creature in there. Mm. We do have the Coil Bug. We could put the Coil Bug in because we can get that back again later game. But what do we take out? Oh man, this is a tough decision here. Everything's so good. Oh, the Easy Prey's got cycling on it, though. I'm thinking we take out the Easy Prey because it's too limiting. We got so much removal. Might take out the Spontaneous Flight. 
Although that's a great combat trick, and it gives one of our creatures flying. Hey, there we go. We're down to 24. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work at all. <laughs> I'm probably going to lose pretty uh, pretty massively because this is a really not a good, not good at all um, sealed deck here. Wish I could have gotten a little better sealed deck, but I think this might work. How many creatures do we got now? We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 creatures, not terrible, but it's not great. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 removables? <laughs> That's a lot of removal. <laughs> well, technically 10, and then the, the heightened reflexes, which are probably going to remove something. And the Light of Hope might remove something too, so. Um, yeah, we got <laughs> pretty much just creatures and removal in here. Um, so it's just going to be aggro, I guess. Not much of uh, anything tricky or cool combos, unfortunately. I was hoping to get some really cool combos to kind of throw out there and have some fun with. Um, we'll keep these five in our sideboard, as well as let's put in the Mamba. Um, I think we need to put in more creatures on the sideboard. Let's put the, uh, let's put the Blister Spit Gremlin in there. I'd love to main deck him. Uh, I don't know what I'll take out, but we can put some of these in if we need more creatures. Um, we are running black and white, so we do have the Kudro we could put in. Other humans we get plus one, plus one. How many of our creatures are humans? Probably not very many. Uh, nope, 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 nope. Do we have any humans? We got one human, two humans. Nope. No, 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 no. We got two humans, so Kudro is not going to do us anything. Um, yeah, we literally only have two humans, so we'd have to sacrifice every every human creature we have to destroy a creature. So Kudro is not going to do us any good. Um, may I'll put the checkpoint officers uh, in the sideboard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Do we have anything specific that would work good in there? Um, put the connection and the class titans. Oh, we do got the thunder main. His ability is not going to do much, but he is a two drop for three, two. I'm going to put him in there just in case. I'm kind of thinking about taking out the harvester and putting in the gremlin so we got a little bit more early game damage. Let's try that. Let's give it a shot. We only got one one drop aside from him. So. Alright, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 cars on our sideboard. Um... Yeah, I don't think anything else is really going to do us much. Sleeper Dart's worthless. I mean, yeah. You know, it only taps a creature down for one turn after you sacrifice it. I mean, if it was tap it, tap target creature. That'd be one thing, but it's not. Alright, so. I think that's probably going to wrap it up for what we've got the ability to use here. So... Yep, I don't see much of anything else. So here's our 15 card sideboard, Harvester, Thundermane, Clash for Titans, Tentative Connection, the two checkpoint officers, the three forbidden friendships in case we need more creatures, the Mamba in case uh, we need more creatures, Spontaneous Flight in case we got a problem with flyers, Easy Prey in case we need to take out more little guys, the Heightened Reflexes, the Mutual Destruction, and another Potato Tiger in case we're going late game on the stuff, if he's around life gain or something. All right, so our lands, we've got white and black, so we'll use the white and black, but that's the only dual land that actually works. So, you know, all the rest of them are colors we're not using. They're all got green or blue in them, so. Uh, so we won't need those. And our Kudro and our Hippo. All right, so there we have it. 
that's what I'm basically gonna, uh, and then I'll just add basic lands as well as the scour barons here. But there's our cards. Tiger, Glulpiki, Ferocious Tigerilla, Caprador, Heedbonder, Howlbonder, Coilbug, Raptor, Artisan, Nipper, Scorpion, Blister, Blister Spit Gremlin. Then we got Heightened Reflexes, Two Swallow Holes, Pacifism, Blade Banish, Go for Blood, Rumbling Rock Slide, Spring Jaw Trap, Blood Curdle times two, Dead Weight, Light of Hope, and then our, our land cycle. So it's going to be the Scour Barons, and then the rest is going to be basic lands. So there you have it. I know it's a long video. I doubt anybody stuck around till the end, or you probably just skipped to the end to see what I finally decided on after I hemmed and hawed for half an hour. But uh, there you have it. That's uh, that's what we're going to build. I'm going to build this deck in Arena to try and... Uh, to try and beat Michael down with it. So we'll see what he what he ends up pulling. Uh, he probably gonna have better luck than that because that was pretty pretty lame. But there's my main deck and my sideboard. Hopefully you guys will tune in Friday. Uh, I'll put in the comments as soon as I know when I talk to Michael tomorrow when we, we finalize uh, what time we're gonna do it. Uh, I'll put it in the comments. Uh, hopefully you guys will tune in and watch this because we're gonna do it live. He's gonna live stream it on Arena. And we're just going to play against each other and see who wins. <laughs> All right. You guys have a great night. I really appreciate you watching. Check out some other videos while you're here. And we'll see you Friday. Thanks. Bye.